Welcome to the Big Fat Mixed Media Tribe and in today's episode we will be making a huge mixed media tag. I'm starting with craft paper which I cut in half so it is an A4 size page cut in half and that will be the tag base and I found in my stash this regular rectangular die and I used it to cut out the uh, two windows this will be a shaker tag so to construct it I will need a back of the tag front of the tag they are exactly the same through transparent sheets to create my shaker and then to create the dimension for shaker elements to fit in I'm using a craft foam these are three millimeter craft foam sheets I prefer these to using a foam glue or foam glue tape as the sequins that you later fill in in your shaker they do not stick to the uh, foam but they do tend to stick to the foam tape i'm using my very favorite tool which is stabilo all pencil in white and this pencil draws on everything including on foam to draw the contour and then I cut it out using the scissors this time not the die just to make life easier and now on to decorating the top layer of our tag I am using these note papers which uh, resemble the bingo cards and a page from a vintage book and some decorative paper and I'm tearing them all in tiny pieces and I will be gluing them on my tag using a heavy gel medium. Of course any glue would be okay, I just love the heavy gel medium as it doesn't soak into the paper that much and I don't want my tag to get wet and warp because that will make gluing the layers together more difficult. I sped this part up quite a bit so that you do not have to watch me gluing endless amounts of tiny pieces of paper there is no rhyme and reason to gluing these papers I'm just trying to not glue the two pieces of the same paper next to one another after gluing the all small pieces down I let the tag dry and now we are ready to work on the next layer I am using Ising Ice paints which are acrylic paints mixed with uh, acrylic medium and this does a wonderful thing uh, the acrylic medium makes the paint transparent so you see on my paintbrush that the color is quite saturated but when I put it down on the paper it is still translucent it is an amazing amazing product and it was not easy to find it in France for some reason and I only bought three colors but after working on this tag which is the first time I'm trying these paints I'm definitely trying to find the rest of the color range because I want every single color of these these are acrylic paints but because they are translucent they do not get dark the project you are working on that as you see it doesn't get dark I can add several layers one on top of another and I still will be able to see my bottom layers through all the paint I'm very very happy with this product so when this first layer of paint uh, has dried I'm using just some border stamps to add additional layer on my tag this background will be about layering this recently is one of my favorite uh, border stamps it's just numbers and since the layers are transparent and the colors are not dark I quite bravely am going in with the black ink and and making quite a lot of marks with my stamp and the second stamp I'm using is this round also black clock stamp And I'm stamping some of the images entirely on my tag, some slightly off the tag, just to add some interest. So 
So when this is dry, I'm going in with the uh, easing case paint again. And you will see that although I'm adding quite a generous amount of paint, you can still see the bottom layers through all those top layers of paints. This is a wonderful, wonderful product and if you have a chance to try it, if you haven't tried it, I suggest to get it and try it. It is a collaboration um, between the Ezink company and Seth Apter and of course Seth Apter knows what he's doing. And again a little bit of the teal color. And I guess if I felt an inspiration I could continue with even more layers of paint one on top of another. And I would still be able to see all the previous layers through the top layers of paint. And when these paint layers are finished, I'm letting my tag to dry completely before proceeding with the next layer. And the next layer was going to be an experiment again. I knew that I wanted to use a layer of embossing powder, but I wanted to use a technique with um, the stamps, where you stamp a stamp into the uh, still liquid embossing powder. So I'm using the Seth Apter product again. These are his uh, baked texture embossing powders. And I'm applying the powder in a generous layer on top of a layer of glycerin. Because I don't want it to be very uniform, I'm using a glycerin which allows the embossing powder layer to be a little bit uh, uneven. So I'm melting the embossing powder and I have as you see already prepared the stamp I'm going to use so now I'm trying to multitask with one hand I'm applying ink to my stamp and with another I'm still melting the embossing powder and while it's still melted I'm pressing the stamp into the powder so my plan was to use a um, rubber stamp because it is deeper and I was hoping to obtain a deeper or better visible marks. So let's see if it worked. I'm lifting the stamp very carefully and uh, no. It has not worked very well. Um, if you if you see here if when the light hits the tag, the embossing powder, you still you see that there is some relief, that there are some marks. So I'm quite happy with that. Only thing is that next time I'm going to choose a stamp which is less intricate. Probably that will work better. But for this tag, for my purposes, it works well. So I'm leaving it like it is. Of course, more things will happen on the top of the tag. But for now, let's put the background aside and work on the construction of the tag. So I'm gluing a transparency on the bottom part of the tag adding and the layer of the foam and since I have this idea in my head which I'm not sure if it will work or not uh, but I want the sequence uh, sort of disappear into the tag when I'm moving the tag maybe it will become clear when the tag is ready I'm cutting the foam layer so that the pocket is much bigger than the screen through which you will see the sequence. So my thought is if I lift the tag up that the sequence will fall into the pocket behind the uh, decorative layer of the tag and they will become invisible. So we'll see if it works or not. It is just something that's in my head and I'm trying to figure out how to make it work. So the <laughs> foam layer being cut I'm gluing it down on top of the transparency layer. So you see that the holes in the foam are much bigger than the actual 
um, windows in the tag and here are my sequins I used um, the this sequin packet which are acrylic sequins uh, which look like tiny tiny little playing cards and they come in a packet like this so I spent quite some time uh, sorting black and red cards from <laughs> one another I did not leave it into this video but under the video I will leave a link to a shorts video where you can see how I sorted the little sequin cards reds from the blacks so I'm filling the reds in one of my windows and the black cards in the other window it is sort of part of my plan I want to make it so that the red cards disappear and black cards appear and black cards disappear red cards appear so it's complicated in my head I'm really not sure if it's going to work I can only hope so so when the sequins are in the second layer of transparency goes on and the last layer we are bringing back our decorative top layer so we are see we are covering the pockets where the sequins are and it looks like the windows are empty at the moment so I'm letting all this dry completely and I came back next day to finish the tag because now the fun part the decoration of the top of the tag I didn't like particularly the uh, windows how they look they didn't look orderly enough for my taste so I found the little strips my dye that cuts the windows fortunately cuts also these little decorative strips around the window so I painted them black and I glued them around the window and I also cut the corners of the tag to resemble tag a little bit more so now the fun part our focal element I will be using this lovely photo of a gentleman uh, which I printed twice and I glued it on black cardstock so that if you turn the tag around from the other side it also looks decent it looks like a shadow or silhouette and I'm gluing them opposite each other as if it was a playing card I did play with an idea for a moment should I paint two sides of the card in different colors or maybe I should paint even the gentleman's suit in different colors but I decided to leave everything as it is that it since this is not a playing card it is just a tag and the final touch some decorative elements I'm gluing down a line of flowers to mark the border between two halves of the tag and I didn't leave in this video how I made the flowers so that it doesn't get unwatchably long but again under the video you will find a link to a short video where I show how I made the flowers but I cut the flowers using flower dyes from graphic 45 but of course it doesn't matter you can use any flower dyes uh, I cut them from red cardstock then I used embossing powders as a second layer just to make them blend in with the background more and for the bigger flowers I used Nouveau drops to draw uh, the centers of the flowers to have some added interest I'm gluing them down using art glitter glue and some of the smaller flowers at the end I also glued down using tiny tiny glue dots to add some dimension to the flowers I'm really happy how it looks it's almost finished now and I'm very happy what the Ising Ice paints have done I'm really happy about the transparency and about the 
many layers you can see through the colors. Oh, just one more finishing touch. It's two little card hearts. <laughs> a red heart and a black heart, which I made the same way as the flowers. I cut the hearts several times from red cardstock and added a layer of black embossing powder on one and red embossing powder on another. And I applied the uh, embossing powder using glycerin to get an uneven coat which suits this mixed media project very well. And here it is, here's my tag. I'm shaking it to show you what it is supposed to do. So the plan was that the red and the yellow cards change, one disappears, another appears. It doesn't work very well. I think it is because the tiny uh, acrylic sequins are really light. They don't want to fall <laughs> easily. Something heavier like glass sequins would be much better for this project. And, and there is something already turning in my head, which I will try and make. But I'm leaving you today with close-up images of the tag and if you liked it please press the subscribe button and I see you in the next episode.